guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at my hometown filming location because guess what? We have something different from that company that's all about muscle cars. It's this vehicle right here. This is a 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. But before we get into this all-wheel drive plug-in electric hybrid performance SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Dodge is making some big gambling changes. They're really gambling the future on what the brand is gonna be all about by eliminating the Hemi V8 and their original muscle cars and going in a new direction. Now this Hornet, especially the RT, is the start of that change. We're gonna be getting the upcoming Charger Daytona, which that is full electrification, and of course the Hurricane powered one. But with this smaller, compact size crossover SUV, they really wanted to go after the performance oriented segment when it comes to crossovers. So when you look at that part of the segment, you're looking at vehicles like the Audi S3. You're looking at the Mercedes Benz GLA AMG 50, uh, excuse me, almost at 53, 35, and of course the BMW X1 series. What I want to find out is if you're looking for the best new performance SUV that's this size, is the Hornet RT the way to go? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this one and find out. Right off the bat, the proportions. I really feel that this is right on the cusp of in between a compact and a subcompact. So that's why we're using the comparison with the uh, Q3 the X1, so on and so forth. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna get, believe it or not, some styling that could be considered muscle car-esque. And let me show you. First of all, you're gonna get, be getting this multi-LED beam headlight design. I love the way they did the daytime running lamp and the turn signal. Working our way down, that is a zonk. We have a large fake vent. I mean, come on, make it functional or and it, could, it doesn't have to be for brake cooling, it could be just for air efficiency, airflow efficiency in the form of an air curtain, or give me some LED lighting in there. Let me know how you feel about this area, but I'm definitely gonna zonk it. I do like the way they sculpted the lower bottom portion to give you that nice aero effect, yet it's all one piece on the front bumper. Now, as we come across the front end, this is where things start to get a little bit better. You have your honeycomb grill, fully functional with the Dodge badging, the rhombus. You have a forward facing camera and what is called the mail slot. That's where you're gonna drop your mail in there. Obviously big radiator behind there. And then on the lower portion, more honeycomb with functionality. You have active air shutters that open and close to let more air in or stop the air from flowing through for that overall fuel efficiency, but definitely this portion here screams Charger to me, the old previous gen Charger, especially with the large mail slot. And I'm glad that they were able to place a forward facing camera in there. Now, as we rise up, one of my favorite things is the hood. And the reason why is you're gonna get a nice bulge, and then you're also gonna get two functional heat extractors on both sides. That to me, just screams muscle car all day. And that's probably my favorite part of the styling. Now, if you compare this to any of the German Euro brands, this one I think definitely has the more aggressive styling overall. Now, when we come around the bend, what do we work with wheel and tire setup? So when you go RT, RT stands for road and track. You do have the gunmetal metallic gray Y spoke design. We got Brembo calipers with the Dodge script there. And then remember, we have all wheel drive. Pilot Sport, all season fours. I wish they were more summer oriented, but they still are gonna give a decent amount of grip, especially with this being all wheel drive. And I like the way they took the gunmetal finish and brought it into the fender opening instead of making it gloss black or God forbid, flat black. But let me know how you feel about this wheel design, especially when we're talking about the overall aesthetics of this Hornet. Now, as we rise up, there's your Hornet badge, ready to sting you right in the neck and kill you if you're allergic. 
You do have gloss black on the mirror caps. You can see our big size turn singles, 360 degree cameras. I like the way there's no roof rails, no roof rails. One of the things I got a zonk is this being an RT, there's no sunroof. WTF on the RT. I don't know why they did that, but I do like the way you have gloss black around the frame openings. It matches all the other black accents, color mesh on the door handles, and then that gunmetal metallic gray on the side skirt extension looks sporty and clean all at the same time. Now working our way back, let's look at the rear. So you're not gonna get the Brembo calipers out back. And to me, that's a bit of a zonk. But remember, these are 20 inch wheels and you're looking at 235 on the width and a 40 series sidewall. But that's a large wheel on one of these smaller SUVs. Now coming around the back, what do we got going on here? You got a door, which I can't open because the door is locked, but of course you're gonna have a fuel door and you're gonna have a charge port door because this is a plug-in electric hybrid. Love the way they did the taillights. Dodge really banged it out of the park, just knocked it out of the park with that LED lighting. You got your RT badge. I could do without this, but here's the challenge. This spoiler does not come far enough back. So I guess my zonk is, is not this necessarily, my zonk is I want my rear spoiler to come back a little further. Give it that extra sporty design and functionality. And then you could take the wiper and hide it underneath. I think that would really just do the rear end of this vehicle. A big, huge double thumbs up on style. Got your Hornet badge, everything blacked out nicely. And then on the bottom portion, I like the way we went gunmetal metallic gray. And when you go RT, you're gonna have your functional oval outlet slash cut on both sides to give us just a little bit more of that sound. But this is all wheel drive. It does have a battery and you could drive it with the internal combustion engine or you could drive it pure EV. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk about all the numbers on how this Hornet performs for 2024. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts. Please excuse the dirt. I did not get this vehicle this dirty underneath the hood, but I think somebody drove this to Dubai and back. At least that's what Steven thinks. But let's see what we got underneath the hood. What you're looking at is a 1.3 liter turbocharged inline four paired to an electric motor, 288 horsepower. Here's the kicker, 383 pound-feet of torque. That's more torque than a Charger RT with a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. It has a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack, a six speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds, top speed 128 miles per hour, combined MPGs 29, combined MPGEs 77. And on pure electric, this thing could go 32 miles on pure EV. And at the end of the day, the vehicle weighs 4,000 205 pounds. So I guess the thing that I'm really liking over the competition is with the Hornet, it's very versatile. You could drive it pure EV, dead silent, get that 32 miles of range, or you could drive it combined and have 77 combined MPGEs. But while we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see it move. Hi guys, we are inside this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. Now, I know you've seen yourself with Joe. I've been a big Mopar guy my whole life. I kind of want something that's a little bit more user-friendly than my Hemi V8s. I'm thinking about this Hornet, but I also have my eye on some German Euro beauties that I've been looking at, some SUVs. How much is this? MSRP for the way that this RT is spec is right at $48,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I do like the nice clean style, soft touch material up top, a little bit of gray finish around the door handle, and then no gloss black on the switch gear, 
nice red stitching that pops off the armrest. Door pocket is a decent size. You could get a slice of New York pizza as long as you fold it and a nice large chocolate milkshake to wash it down. Going from the door panel to the dash, soft touch. I love the red stitching. And then as you slide in, you're gonna have this floating iPad style 10.25 inch Uconnect 5 system. Really intuitive, easy to use. You could go into your home, you got all your usual screens. I love the way it shows the power supply, where your battery pack is, the electric motor, all those goodies. You have your accessory gauges, technical gauges, turbo boost, oil temp, all that. And then you could add pages, which is kind of cool. You could pull up all the different icons and apps. And then when you go into things like comfort, this is where you adjust your AC control. You could do it right off the screen. I'll show you another way you could do it as well. And then, of course, you do have your three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats, and that's a zonk at $48,000, but you do get a heated steering wheel. Go back in the vehicle. There we are. We could go to the performance gauges, your boost, your torque, and then those are the main ones, especially transmission and oil temp or your e-hybrid, because you could do up to 32 miles on a charge. Throw it in reverse. Backup camera takes up all the room, and I like the 360. I just wish it was a little bit clearer on the resolution, but definitely not too shabby compared to other systems that Dodge has brought. And then we're right back to where we started. More of that great red stitching. You have real deal AC controls, dual climate, you got 12 volt, USB-C, USB-A, and a place to put your phone, but it's not a wireless charger. 48 grand, that's a zonk. Start, stop button, easy to get to. And then you have this random sport button. The reason why I say it's random is because you actually have a drive mode button on the steering wheel, but they felt like putting this one down here. Really confusing. Silver touch is nice. Flat black, no gloss black. You do have a finger rolling barrel for your volume. This is going to control your six-speed automatic transmission. Two cup holders, your standard Dodge key fob. It says Dodge on it. Remote start. Semi-soft on the armrest. I do like the height of it with the red stitching. And then you open it up. You got enough room in there for your balls. Two baseballs, one signed by Jose Canseco, one signed by Cal Ripken Jr., I wonder which one is worth more. Probably the one where the guy did not inject himself with steroids 24 hours a day. Do you know between those two baseball players who was the one that used all the steroids? I'll give you a hint. His initials are JC. Seats, the leather, the Dodge badge embroidery. I love the way these sports seats should have the red. It's like this perforated with the red material. Nice bolstering. You do have electric assist for the driver and the passenger, which is wonderful. The other big zonk is, what is going on? Like I pointed out outside, no sunroof. No sunroof and a $48,000 crossover SUV. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I do have a pretty darn good looking steering wheel I wanna show you coming over. All right, guys, we got three memory seat settings for the driver's seat. I do like the Hornet sill plate on both sides of the front doors. And then of course we have a little bit of aluminum on the brake pedal, the throttle. I just wish there was an aluminum dead pedal. Don't like the way they have this carpet that's just showing because you're just going to rip it up with your feet. Seat controls are easy to get to, thank God, especially that lower lumbar. I'm six feet tall and they did a good job carving out the headliner to give you a little bit more headroom. Steering wheel is a thing of beauty. Two-piece leather. Love the way they put the perforated at the 10 and 2 notches. You got your E-Drive mode selector button. Everything else is flat black. Check out the metal. Not plastic, not tin. Metal, massive surfboard style gear change levers. So you could go up and down your gears. And they're bolted to the steering column. That's why they're so large. So no matter where you are in the steering wheel rotation, you'll be able to hit your marks with your fingers. This is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Nice clean graphics, of course. You could go into electric, 
e-save, save it for the twisty bits when you get to it, or full hybrid. I'm gonna put it back into sport mode, there's sport on. And then you can scroll in the center there through a cornucopia of information, which is really nice as well. But while we go ahead, let's get in the back seat and see if your passenger is gonna be happy that you went Hornet over the competition. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, back seat time. And just like up front, they did a great job on the seating materials, the leather material, the Alcantara, and the way that the red shines through. On the back of the seat, you got more of that nice leather style material, large pockets, put a couple, uh, you know, one pound family size bags of Twizzlers in there. And then of course you do have some rear AC vents, which are nice, USB-C, USB-A. I'm still six feet tall and you know what? They still did a great job with the headliner, plenty of headroom. Pull this guy down. Ooh, that's, that's Charmin Soft, I like that. With two cup holders, flip it back. But why don't, you go, why don't we go ahead, let's get in the cargo area and see how much room there is in this smaller crossover SUV. All right guys, cargo area time. Now on this one, the big zonk is you don't get electric assist. And to me, on an RT, it's gotta be electric assist, but it's not a big deal to lift. What you're gonna be greeted to is a pretty good amount of room. One of the things I wanna point out is you are gonna have a 12 volt. And then underneath here is where you're gonna have your charging accessories. You don't get a spare. As you'll see, you have a can of flat fix and an electric air compressor. Now, the good news at the end of the day is that if you need more space, that rear seat will fold down and you have a rear seat pass through. You're looking at 23 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Put the rear seat down. That's going to give you 51 cubic feet of space. But you know what? It's now that time. Should be electric. Shouldn't, shouldn't it? Let me know in the comment section. It's about that time. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go for a little on throttle spin and see how good this Hornet RT really is. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. I have it in sport mode. Sport mode is gonna handle all the internal combustion engine stuff and also hook it up and sync it perfectly with the electric motor and the all wheel drive. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shifter, pull it towards me because that's gonna allow me to, to surf with these massive paddles behind the wheel that are full on metal. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's roll on out here nice and slow. On throttle, here we go. So nice quick shifts from that six speed automatic transmission. It's not an eight speed, it's a six speed. I do love the way they still have physical knobs and buttons for the AC. And then going down the road, it's interesting because I was expecting just a little bit more sound out of that exhaust. When the car, when the Hornet is idling, it sounds like it's gonna be a really cool experience with the audio coming from the exhaust, but it's kind of lacking. And I don't know why. I mean, this is supposed to be a muscle car crossover SUV, a performance SUV. You gotta have some sound. The good news is though, is that the way they did the suspension, this thing handles extremely well. On oh, throttle, here we go. And a lot of it has to do with that battery being low in the chassis. That 12 kilowatt hour battery for the plug-in hybrid system really helps lower the center of gravity a little bit to give you just some better handling dynamics and characteristics but getting on the highway it merges nicely i'm just surprised it's not a little bit quicker it's decent but i would like a little bit quicker for get me down to 4.9 second range i think then you'd really have something you could call a little bit more performance oriented but these seats are spectacular they have great lateral grip but also very comfortable. I'm really, really digging the seats. Steering wheel is fantastic. Getting to that 10.25 inch infotainment system screen is all within fingertip reach. And I like the way you could kind of rest your hand here while you're navigating through the system so you don't have to hold your arm up. But for me, it's, it's really in the driving dynamics. I like the feedback that comes to the wheel and I'm really liking 
how the six speed shifts up and down through the gearbox. Ride obviously is gonna be on a little bit on the sportier side, especially when you are in sport mode, but it's nothing too harsh that's gonna shake your internal organs out of your body, so don't worry about that. I think the one thing I would like to see is a head-up display. But here we go, round, round, round. On throttle. It was all the way up to about 6,000 RPM. Let's see how those Brembo brakes work. On the brakes, smooth downshifts. That's where it gets a little fun. <laughs> there we go. With the all-wheel drive, you're getting all grip, that's for sure. This right-hand bend really holds a line well. And then, of course, with the Brembo brakes, it allows you to stop on a dime and give everybody change. Like I said, I was just expecting a little bit more performance and I feel like some of the amenities are not in this one. Now, yes, you can option more for this vehicle. There is like a tech package that bumps the price up to fifty to $53,000, but for 48 grand, I expect to see ventilated seats. I expect to see a power lift gate, things like that. But the good news is when it comes to driving dynamics, it's actually quite fun to drive if you're in the right situation with the right twisty roads. But we're gonna go ahead, hopefully this has been a nice overall review of what this Hornet is bringing, the RT trim. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, been another great day in so many ways with this 2024 Dodge Hornet RT. Definitely wanna thank the whole Dodge team for getting us access to this performance crossover SUV. Let me know what you think. Are you going Hornet? Are you gonna go BMW, Audi, or with that AMG? Let me know down in the comment section how you're feeling about this being called a performance crossover SUV. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rides family. We gotta give it up to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He started off as a subscriber and a fan, and now look at him. He's helping to create the existence of Raised Rides and all the good things that come with it. So definitely give him a huge shout out in the comment section. Follow him on Instagram, sfloodphoto. He's pretty darn good with a camera. I don't like telling him that too much because we don't need his ego to get bigger and bigger. But thank you, Stephen, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.